happy, happy talk Tuesday. Hi, hi, hi. I am... What am I doing? Oh. I am doing this to flip it so you can see my shirt. God is dope because he is... Um, Happy Talk Tuesday. It's your girl, Ashley, the amateur expert, coming to you live today for this episode of Talk Tuesday. I keep saying that, and I don't know if it's called Talk Tuesday, but we're, we're still sorting that out, I guess, two years later, the 100 and some odd episodes in. I am excited to be here. Happy that you are with us. Um, if this is your first time joining, thank you and welcome. I hope that you come back. Um, we are going to have a conversation today um, with our guest, and she's going to tell us about her career path, her ideas of success, and her tips and motivators that she's used along the way. Um, it is my strong belief, and I, like, for real believe this to my core, that when you hear somebody's story, uh, it's, it's a source of inspiration. And so I am excited for Jalen to join us today. We're going to hear about her career path and um, yeah, and she's the boss in her own right. Um, and so yeah, so while we're waiting for her to join, I see my mom has tapped in. Hey mom, I see Tiff has joined. Hey Tiff, and Jalen has arrived. Um... So we were going to wait for her to get in and we're going to wait for her to join. If you are interested in being on the podcast and or know someone who would be a good fit, please have them slide into my DMs or shoot an email, ashley at theamateurexpert.com. We have some slots left for the rest of the year and trying to keep this thing going, staying consistent. So yeah, let me know um, if you want to be on the show and hey mom hey miss cynthia hey julia the people them are joining happy talk tuesday okay so we're waiting for our guests to join us but i was just saying that if you are interested in being on the show or if you know someone who would be a good fit please let us know um you can have them slide into my dms and or shoot me an email ashley at theamateurexpert.com um, let's see if I can invite Jalen. I can. Hey, Jess. Hello, hello. Hello, Ashley. How are you? I am well. Happy Talk Tuesday. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, happy Talk Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, you are coming off an amazing weekend, so I'm so excited for you to be on the show today. Um, so I want you to do me a quick favor. Tell us who you are and what you are doing currently for work. Okay, awesome. Hello, everyone. For those of you all who don't know, I see some um, from here. My name is Jalen, and I am a entertainment publicist based out of New York and Atlanta. Um, I primarily work in entertainment, lifestyle, music, and sometimes tech. And I work with thought leaders, and I help amplify their stories through um, strategic brand storytelling and um, partnership. I keep saying that I need to hire you because I do. But we're going to talk about that another time. <laughs> we Girl, we fine. <laughs> right, we got time. We got time. Okay. Got so <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. So I want you to briefly, before we get into the questions, tell us a little bit about um, the panel that you spoke on this weekend. Yes. So um, my good girlfriend, her name is Tasha Mack. Hey, she, Tasha. Yes. Hey, Tasha. She's actually based in, um, in LA. I should, I should connect you guys. Oh, Yes, well, I've known Tasha since about um, 2017, and when I first moved to New York, and we'll get into that journey later, but when I first moved to New York, I was really trying to figure out a way to network mm -hmm. um, outside of um, putting on the suit, going outside, and just winging it. Mm -hmm. I want to try to find community because I was fresh out of college. I didn't know anyone outside of the people who I was living with. Mm -hmm. And I joined Facebook groups to try to find housing and subleases and things like that. But when mm -hmm. it came to my career path and my career field, 
I felt like a freshman in in high school. I felt like a freshman. <laughs> I was starting from from ground zero, and so um, there was this thing, and I don't know how ancient it is now um, because I don't get on it as much anymore. But it was called Group Me, and so in Group, <laughs> it's still a, it's still a thing. I was like, where is she going with this Black Planet, MySpace? <laughs> Yes, group me. Are you making these connections with my space now? But I was on group me, and I'm pretty sure a lot of us know what group me is. And mm -hmm. so there were a ton of group B um, groups that I was joining when I first moved to New York. There was a um, NYC housing. There was a um, there was a, a New York media. Like literally for any sub hobby, mm -hmm. whatever. There was a group me for it. So I was joining a bunch of group me's, mm -hmm. and then. One um one thing led to another, and I ended up just falling into this Black Girl Remedia group. Me and at the time, it was probably about ten of us. Mm -hmm. And Tasha was going to NYU at the time; she was getting her master's, and she was like, "I want to create a group for all of us to just kind of network, stay in touch, um, connect the dots, and that just would and, and put opportunities in there. And that's all that it was. That. Um, and so then I remember um. I ended up leaving the agency that I was working at. I was a talent assistant at ICM mm -hmm. Park. And that was where I lived out my Devil Wear Prada dreams. <laughs> and that. I was just fed up. It was February. It was bright. It was at the end of January. And New York Fashion Week was coming up. Mm -hmm. And someone put in the group me, they're like, hey, I'm looking for a PR assistant for Calvin Klein. Um, I'm only trusting the people in this group. Mm -hmm. Can someone send me their resume? That works. I feel like sometimes it's not about um, the best resume, but sometimes it's about who did it first. <laughs> mm -hmm. if, but if you have a nice resume and you, and you move pretty quickly, mm -hmm. um, your are are a lot more higher. So 100%. I did. And I got my very first ever freelance gig in her Black Girls and Media group me. And even the person who connected me, I, she is she has been my friend for going on five five years now. Okay. And I got the opportunity. Like, I remember reaching out to Tasha on the side, like, hey, girl, whatever you're doing, this is working. So keep doing it. And so 10 members turned into 20 members and then 20 members have turned into a network of over, um, I want to say, 80,000 people now. And yeah. so has just been doing phenomenal. She has had digital conferences. She's had workshops. She's created um, basically an infrastructure to where up-and-coming um, media mavens are searching for employment. And so she has job, um, she has job boards, post things on there where companies will reach out to her and mm -hmm. they put their jobs on there. I know she has, she's responsible for employing over 200 women. Um, mm -hmm. She, the girl, the girl is on fire. And so anytime Tasha does anything, she like offline, she has now became like a good friend of mine, but yeah. her paved the way for a lot of people, including myself. So I'm like a walking testimony. So when she called me and she was like, hey, I'm doing the first ever in-person conference in Atlanta, I was like, I'm there. It was a no-brainer. Love that. And then with the actual conference itself, um, it was about um, behind the scenes and, and what does that look like for professional um, media women. And um, we had, we had, we had a journalist, we had and we had a publicist who was actually on the sweet live, so she's on air. Well, she's on TV, but she's also behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, we had a little bit of everybody on our panel, and so we talked about pivoting. We talked about uh, we talked about risk. We talked about betting on yourself, and then ideally, it just turned into like a safe space for us to mm -hmm. really be vulnerable with each other. It wasn't that cookie cutter keep going keep dreaming <laughs> i put a bite on my pay hey i was i was out there telling people look people gonna give up on you but you, <laughs> you <don't> <laughs> <laughs> i 
<laughs> that is so real, so real. We're going to post that in the stories today so everyone can get a chance to see that. But if you're listening and you're not following Jalen, definitely please go back and follow her because she is, like I said, a PR boss. All right, so let me ask you this. Uh, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? And uh, what was the motivating factor behind that? Hmm. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a pediatrician. Real bad. Okay. okay. I think my favorite place when I was little was going to the doctor's office. I thought it was really? just... Like, yes. I loved going to the doctor's office. I thought it was this magical place. I thought that, you know, it was just so... I think because I love the building. I think when you're mm. little, everything is just big. And mm -hmm. so I just fell in love with um how how new the building looked and they had a they had a playground and they had a fish tank and I think that was like the first time that I was like ever in a setting like that yeah. and then uh I love my doctor so much I just love going to the doctor and so I just was like I want to be a pediatrician like you can be a doctor for kids like that's a and so <laughs> and so after that I just for a while I had my heart set on being a pediatrician. And when I got to college, and well, not even when I got to college, when I was in middle school, I struggled with math really bad. Mm. And my dad saying, like, Daily, you got you gotta see and you gotta see in math. Like <laughs> this is what you're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think this is for me. <laughs> so I learned very quickly because Math and science was not my, which was so ironic though, because my dad is an engineer. And mm. so math and science was his thing. But I was like, you know what? Focus on your strengths. And that's not one of them. <laughs> that is so funny. It skipped you in some way. But that's okay, because we have you here at this in this capacity. Um, So what did you think success was? I know you said it was, uh, you wanted to be a pediatrician because of the building. There's like, you just loved the the woman or the person um but what what did you how would you have defined success when you were younger well that's a really good question I feel like I would have defined success by I feel like when I got to middle school mm -hmm. and college well high school I feel like I was defining success by not looking at price tags mm. <laughs> I think growing up, I think I just thought, I, I didn't, you don't really process how money grows. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, Shay. Hi, Shay. Shout out to Miss Media Claim. It's one of my, one of my big sisters. But um, I don't think that you think about like people going to work and how much money you make and taxes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't think people think about those type of things. And so I was just like, oh, we're going to Disney World this year. I had something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going on. We're going to go see Auntie and Uncle in California, and they live in this big fancy mansion. To me, that was success, mm -hmm. and that was like it was just certain monumental things um, that my family did, and mm -hmm. it's like that form of consistency. And you always had that to look forward, to, like being able to be have a big backyard and have mm -hmm. a huge cookout every year um that was success to me mm -hmm. because i knew that that was something that my family was going to look forward to mm -hmm. and now older i don't think about who's going to pay for that food who's mm -hmm. going to pay for those rental spaces who's buying these flights like <laughs> and it's so surreal like we still like my my family still keeps the traditions like going to Disney World every year and stuff like that. But you know, I'm I'm 27 now, so my dad is like, all right, so you buying your flight? And <laughs> for last month we went to Disney World, and my dad was like, are you you buying your flight? And I'm like, oh, I got to do that. <laughs> what, what you, I don't understand. This is just what we. This is what y'all do, and I just right. show up. <laughs> so, a lot of family values and a lot of family traditions. I felt like that was success, and those were mm -hmm. those were the things that I look forward to. But I just didn't. I never thought about the the sacrifices that our our parents mm -hmm. made in in making okay. those memories happen. So mm -hmm. for me, it's really about the memories that that drove those experiences, and that was success. 
I love that. Okay, so you started to give us a little bit of the journey with uh, sharing about, you know, not being that strong in math. And then you also shared about the group me um, and being in New York. So if you can tell us how you got from wanting to be a, pedi a pediatrician to now being this PR boss. Definitely. So, oof. so on my mom's side, um, I'm an only child. So on my dad. Me too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> only I feel like children see only children. Like I feel like that's a you know. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing for um <laughs> and so that that also I'll I'll get into that later because I had to unlearn a lot of things by being an only child, especially living on somebody's couch. So I'll mm. get into I can't um, wait to hear this this story. Right. And so basically I want to say by middle school, I really fell in love with the arts, mm -hmm. and I was I, I I fell in love with theater. I became a lesbian, and that carried me to um, high school. And so I started being a part of productions. But I was on the I was on the logistical side. I was a stage mm -hmm. manager. Um, mm -hmm. I enjoy just being behind the scenes. I enjoy giving direction and execution, mm -hmm. and I I had really good leadership skills because like I said, I was the only child. So a lot of times I kept myself busy by extracurricular activities. And even before middle school and high school, like my mom always had, like I was a very involved kid. So mm -hmm. I did gymnastics, I did Taekwondo, I did swimming, I did um, volleyball, I did track, like I, you name it. I, I did just about every sport you could think of except for football and basketball. Um, and I remember um, just really falling in love with that and going into college, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to major in. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just be an English major because I, I know if I can't do anything else, I can write. And I think mm -hmm. around okay. in high school, people were like, oh, think about think when, you, when it's time to decide a major, think about a career path that you would do for free. I'm like, what would I do for free? And I was writing. And so I majored in writing, but it wasn't until um, I met with my academic advisor and she was like, you're giving me very much mass calm. You're very animated. Um, I feel like you have a lot to say. You have a lot of a personality. Um, and some of the things that you're talking about that you like to do, I think that you, sh I think just try it. Take a mass I comp, put a mass comp class on my Skype as a English major. And I think by second semester, I came to Harvard and said, I want to change my major. <laughs> Throw it on. And so I remember my sophomore year, I was taking some intro to PR classes. And I will never forget, I had this adjunct professor and she walked in that room and owned it. She had her mm. star coffee in one hand. She had on her big bulky glasses, like something like I got on right now. She had on her red bottoms and I knew she wasn't like any of the other professors because mm. in the mass comm department, it was a lot of outdated professors who were just strictly coming from the newsroom. But you didn't really see like younger, upbeat professors. And so, and she was a black woman. Mm -hmm. And so I saw her, I saw my, mm -hmm. and I, before she could even introduce to me whatever it is that she was going to for the day, I was just intrigued by the way she carried herself. I was intrigued by the way she exuded confidence Mm -hmm. And when she gave us an introduction of what she was going to be teaching us for the year, I felt like Raven Simone when she <laughs> vision. And it was like, I, I probably, probably did one of those, like, look at you. locked in. <laughs> and I was her class, and I stayed up till three o'clock in the morning in my dorm room looking up public relations. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what is this? What is this? I went on YouTube. I was reading things on Google. I just stayed up all night and I was just like, 
like, yes, this is me. Like, this is it. yep. Job descriptions for different PR roles in the field. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I can do that. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. And so the more and more that I was taking her class, it didn't feel like work. It didn't feel like, mm -hmm. oh, like African American studies. And let me hurry up. And, let me do this essay at the last minute. It was no, like I was intentionally like taking this serious. And mm -hmm. towards the end of the semester, we mm. had to do like this case study. Mm -hmm. And the whole entire journalism department was putting on this thing called the JMC Awards. So it was like okay. a replica of the BET Awards. And okay. I think I think that she could tell that I was I was a lot intrigued by it. Um and so she was like, Jalen, you're going to be the PR manager for the JMC Awards. I was like, oh, okay. And I was so excited. I was so excited to the point where, like, I I, I remember scheduling. So they, we had, like, this on-campus diner in Savannah, at Savannah State. And I remember um, reaching out to her, like, emailing her and be like, hey, like, can we, like, can we, can we have coffee? Like, can we, can we do that? Like, are we allowed to do that? And mm. yes. And so we had a breakfast, we had a breakfast date and she just, poured so much into me and she just gave me the battery in the back that I needed to you know stay passionate and stay hungry mm -hmm. about just not only public relations but just life and mm -hmm. just wanting more for myself and all and and it was to the point where she inspired me to like get a lot more involved on campus and mm -hmm. I ended up that semester ended up running to be Miss Junior, which was like, um, for those of for those of you all who aren't kind of familiar with um like the campus queens, it's basically so you have like Miss Savannah State who was like the official face, the official ambassador of the university okay. and then she court. And so you have like a, a class queen from each class. So <laughs> Um, she was really like she just kept saying like yeah like you should use me and Miss Junior as a case study, and I was like oh okay like I never really thought about it like that because I always I always look at it from a sense of like a beauty queen because like when mm. I, I I ran to be like the homecoming queen and I was on the I was on the homecoming court mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I thought of like just about the sash and the crown and and mm -hmm. outer but I didn't think about it in a strategic way to where this could potentially set me up to gain more practice because mm -hmm. let's be real. I wasn't doing internships in college. Mm -hmm. I was extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. And so I was, um, I was going through a bad breakup. I broke up with my high school sweetheart mm -hmm. um, three years and I needed something that was going to keep me busy. Yeah. And so I took her up on her offer and I said, okay, like, let me, let me give it a try. And I won. And so then, Congrats. thank you. And so I took it. I took it a step further, and then I was a lot more intentional. It wasn't about the sash or the crown for me at all. Mm -hmm. It was about number one, staying busy because I was trying to push through a heartbreak, okay. and then, and then professionally or um, you know, academically, it was about seeing if I had what it took to be this 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 PR maven that I was yeah. I was trying to figure out. And mm -hmm. so when I I treated my whole entire reign as if I was Miss Savannah State, basically. And so a lot of people were like just really admiring the work that I was doing on campus. I was doing community service. Mm -hmm. I was having, I was doing programming. You know, I was trying to look the part. And a lot of people were like, oh, you, sh you should run for Miss Savannah State. And they were like, they were talking about like the sash and the crown and all the attention you would get amongst all of the HBCUs and how you could really put on. And in my mind, a light bulb clicked off. And I said, all right, Jalen, you got to go into your senior year. You haven't had any PR internship experience. The only thing that you have done was the James C. Award show. Mm. So maybe it's your time to really put your money where your mouth is. And so I, okay. I, bet, um, I bet it myself. And I said, look, you win Miss Savannah State, you gonna you gonna do PR, and if you don't, you're not doing PR. <laughs> it's okay, not okay. <laughs> and that was like my competitive, mm -hmm. um, my Virgo tendencies, my perfection. 
60s, it was just all kind of like click coming together. So, yeah. So I did it. And I put together um, a, a strategic campaign where I had I had um, class leads. I had a, a, a sophomore, freshman, junior, senior lead. Um, I broke everybody down into groups. I was delegating. Um, I had a commercial. I had an app. I had okay, so. at a fashion show. And the the most um, captivating thing about it was. At the time, I fell in love with Olivia Pope mm. and Harry Washington playing her and just the yep. whole the scandal. I, I yep. fell in love. So my whole campaign was just really themed around scandal and just being this boss. And mm -hmm. my flyers looked exactly like her fly. Like, like from so PR and marketing, I kind of like put it all in one because I said, look, I am I'm my own client. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a case study. <laughs> That's real, right? And so I, I ended up winning, and I was thrilled. I was so thrilled to the point. Um, my campaign was so great that my my senior PR practicum teacher allowed for me to use my Miss Savannah State reign um, as a as my senior class project in order to graduate, wow. and so. And so it it was that the campaign was that good. And it just gave me, it gave me so much confidence to like, be like, okay, although I didn't really have internship experience, mm -hmm. I myself and I connected the dots. Um, and I just, and I just was just this young, bright girl who was just ready to just explore what PR had to offer. And even though I didn't really know, I knew surface level things. But yeah, I had yeah. a passion to eventually make me hungry enough to move to New York. And I remember at graduation, my same mentor, she was very proud of me. Like, she, I'm talking about she's helped sponsor me. She made me come up with a sponsorship deck. She made me come up with a deck. I had to, you know, get my first placement. I remember pitching myself to the, to the school newspaper to make sure that, you know, I got recognized in there. And that was, like, my first placement. Yeah. It was and I remember we were at graduation and her sister actually, um, cause it was so funny when I actually first won Miss Savannah State, her sister was um, an executive at Epic Records and she was looking for an assistant. And that was kind of like my first New York seat, like planting of the seeds. And okay. she was my sister, she's looking for an assistant at Epic Records. Do you want to, do you want to, do you want the job? I'm like, you know, you know, I still got another year left, right? I can't just quit. She said, okay, well, that will be waiting on you when you graduate. And so I said, okay. And so in the midst of all of that, I was I was exploring other opportunities mm -hmm. and I was doing other things. And even I got a little bit distracted after I graduated, maybe like the first month. And, you know, I went back home to Atlanta and – I was trying to um, party promote and I was trying mm. to up for free and I was just trying to like live my best life after I graduated. That's <laughs> great. Um, I'll never forget. She pulled me to the side and she called me from New York because she was her, like our other, our other friend. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's like our guy friend. He was like the first person to graduate from Savannah state. And okay. then, paved the way for her to move um, to New York. And then I came like under them and I was kind of like the baby. Mm -hmm. And for like in um, TV and, and film production. And I remember her calling me and cussing me out. She was like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. and, I, mm -hmm. and she was like, this party promoter thing, this is not you. Mm -hmm. No. And I was like, I know, but like, you know, I don't really, I didn't have a job. Like, that. Like right. I, was, I was embarrassed. Like, I had this promise, mm -hmm. but I have, like, and I, and I knew she meant well, but I was like, I didn't have, a, I didn't have an offer. And I had just right. turned down a tech job in the Silicon Valley because I knew I didn't want to do that. I knew I was like, in the back of my mind, I still wanted to do PR. So I just mm -hmm. felt like, effing, I'm just going to have fun right now. Right, and right, right. By, like, your tribe and the who you are consistently 
talking to every day is so important. Mm -hmm. because had she not called me and snatched me up, I probably wouldn't even be having this conversation with you today. And okay. she was like, no, ma'am, this is not you. Like, you you need to come up here to New York, like, now. And I'm like, well, where am I going to stay? She said, you're going to stay on my couch. You're going to mm -hmm. stay on Tony's couch. I already asked Tony. He said, it's cool. So that's, that's what's about to happen. I said, well, you know, like, I'm my mama's only child. You know, she's not going to go for that. <laughs> Don't even worry. You need to just book a one way and we will figure mm -hmm. it. And that has okay. been the ever since I've been in New York was always just figure it out. Those were the words mm -hmm. that I did by. So long story short, I remember like I had like a sales. I had a, I, one of my profiles. She was trying to like hook me up with like a like a local sales job. And I remember putting on like one of my Miss Savannah State suits. And I remember just I remember I was listening to Black Girl podcast. I was like when I was mm -hmm. real. I was really committed to like their their beginning episodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They like they were real, they were authentic. They was doing it in New York, and I I, I just I loved them. And I remember the episode where Scotty had just quit her job at Hot ninety seven, mm -hmm. and I remember her just her and the girls. They were all just it was just such an emotional episode, and it was mm -hmm. just a risk and believing in yourself and having faith and she just knew in her gut like she, there was more out there um for her and as i'm driving to my interview i'm like in tears uh, like a, it's like hitting me in the chest and i'm right. like she's speaking to me like she's speaking to me <laughs> oh my gosh oh my god and i'm bawling and i turned around i you didn't even go i didn't go to the interview and i remember I remember I, I remember I came home and my mama was still getting ready for work. And she was like, that was quick. <laughs> it, was, it was like five minutes. And she was like, okay. And I remember like, I went home and I just started packing my bags. And I told my mama, I was going to New York for two weeks as I was waiting on my, I was waiting on my, um, my offer or to see what they, the job was going to get back to me. And in the meantime, while I wait for them, I'm going to just go, I'm going to just take the graduation money that I got, $500, and I'm going to just go to New York for two weeks. And so she was like, okay. But my mama, like, that last, that, that, like, the day that it was time for me to go to my friends for two weeks. I had mm -hmm. like, I had two big suitcases. I flew Southwest because you know what Southwest. You get those. <laughs> um, you know, I had a bunch of stuff. And she's like, this don't look like two weeks worth of stuff. This look like a month. I'm like, well, you know, I and then I gotta have my outfits. And she knew because like her eyes was like getting you know, watery mm -hmm. and. I've never like I don't my like my mom is a very strong woman. I I don't see her cry often. Mm -hmm. I think the last time I saw her cry was when she was like dropping me off to school. And so she cried. And so I think she knew that she was like dropping mm -hmm. me off. And I just didn't really speak on it until like I got up there. And mm -hmm. that's when I told her I'm like, I'm I'm moving to New York. And she she knew and it was like it was hard. It was definitely hard at first, but she 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 knew I had to leave the nest. And then I got up there. I called I called my mentor. Said, mm -hmm. "Hey, I'm I made it. I'm in New York. You know, is that job still available?" <laughs> she was like, "Actually, we're doing summer. Um, actually, my husband is doing. Um, he's he's over digital at Hot, and um, we're looking for there. He's looking for volunteers for summer jam. Are you available?" I said, "Absolutely." She's like, okay, we'll we'll come by the Hot 97 office and um, you can set up a meeting with him to meet him and figure out what, what's needed. Mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember just going up there and it was like a dream. It was everything like I saw in the movies. This is my first time ever in New York. I was lost. I was scared. I just felt like, again, I was like a freshman back in high school. And I'll never forget... I was supposed to just volunteer that one day. Mm -hmm. And 
literally that one day and sometimes that's all it takes is just getting in the opened up the doors for the, for my whole entire career and so from there i ended up um working my ass off i stayed on my feet for 13 hours and i was working with the executive and she was talent wrangling i saw everybody in one night I remember running this Chris Brown. I was in Chris Brown's dressing room, making sure he had what he needed. I was with Cardi. I was with MC Light. I was with Queen Latifah. I was with DJ Khaled. They was like, you know how to do social media? Anything they, they threw at me, I was like, yup. And in the back of my mind, I may have not known, but I was going to figure it out. They was like, figure it out. go check on Davies. And I'm like, who is Dave East? <laughs> like, I'm the I was like, I don't know who this is. But guess what? In the in the meantime, in between time, I was figuring it out, Googling, asking nobody no dumb questions, and so I remember staying on my feet that whole entire day, and it was me and it was two other people. She sent the other two people home, wow, because they were like, "Oh, can I go take a break? Or can I do this?" And you know that that goes back to that that hustle culture, that grind. Yeah. And at the time, like for that season, that worked for me. Yeah. I don't do that anymore, and I don't. And I don't always promote grind culture in certain seasons, but I had to, I had to really, and I had to really, um, I had to really make myself um, an asset in a situation and not a liability. Sure. So I had, I had to be a part of that grind culture to just to get my foot in the door. Yeah. I'm doing that all the time now. All the time now, hell no. But well, that's. Mm -hmm. I I might, but I understand. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm being on my feet for for thirteen out for thirteen hours every day, no break. Yeah. No. 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 I'm not like the grind. Different. We still working hard, but it ain't looking like that anymore. It's yeah, but like, I I think there's something to say about people who can do it though, and who have the hunger and the eagerness to get it done, even though it's toxic a little bit, you know. But go ahead, keep. Going. Yeah. Uh, we're here. And so long story short, she gave me her number and she was like, I like you. You know, you 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 survived today. And mm -hmm. it's kinda of, I, I felt like I felt like in Hathaway when um <laughs> when First of all, that is one of my favorite movies of all time. So I love that we keep referencing it. <laughs> I I live my double I live I outlive my double wear product. It has Man. been <laughs> and I, I just it. like her when she was like that is all like that was me like that was literally that scene and it was like stay in touch and I said I will and I remember I blew her up um maybe like a week after that and she was like she probably was just like you know let me just let me just let me just respond back to this little girl and she was like you know how to do social media right you did it for you did it for summer jam I said yes so I have a job for you. You want to? She was like, "You want to do social for Remy?" And I said, "Okay." And she was like, "Okay, meet me, meet me at, meet me at the station at this this time, and we could talk about it." This was when they first like this was Canva. This Canva, the, the Canva that <laughs> was not the. I put together a a, a pitch deck. I took elements from my campaign in college. I put a SWOT analysis. I put together a strategic plan. I put together a mock grid of what this woman's grid can look like. I I made it customized and I made it personal. And I remember staying up for like seven hours the night before, just finishing it out. And I remember going to FedEx the next day early in the morning to print it all out mm. and get manila folders and I had three and I just because I wanted a back I wanted one for her I wanted one for me and then I just needed a backup one mm. and I remember just putting on one of my Miss Savannah State suits I remember going into the office having all of my things almost getting lost but I was there and I showed up and I was nervous and I didn't know what the hell I was doing you showed but up and I, showed out. And but I but I knew I wasn't I wasn't taking no for an answer. Mm -hmm. She looked at all of that stuff for maybe about 
five minutes. I don't even think she looked through everything. I I think it was sometimes it's just about the effort. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was like, "You hired." Mm -hmm. I said, oh, it was that easy. I was like, "You don't want to see my degree." <laughs> <laughs> no. And so then that's when I'm. That's when I met Remy. Like mm -hmm. I went her, and she was in a. I would, I'll never forget. She was in. It was in a dark room, and. She was just like, go ahead, show her what you showed me. And mm -hmm. I was nervous, but I showed up. And sometimes, you know, you're not going to be, sometimes when you get that that short window of opportunity, you're not going to be ready. It's not going to be sexy. It's not mm -hmm. going to, you know, you dressed up with your hair flowing in the wind. Sometimes it looks like your voice is trembling. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looks like you're nervous sometimes it looks like self-doubt it sometimes looks like you're trying to talk yourself out of it but you got to show up for you anyway and mm -hmm. that's what I did and she didn't even look up and I just knew I blew it and I said well you know thank you so much for your time I'm a big fan and I just looked at that they called me the next day they was like this is the address this is where you need to be at this time. And when I got there, I, she asked me for my number. She told me to look at my phone. I had a flight confirmation to fly out with her the next day. And I became her personal assistant and her social media manager. And then the rest was history. <laughs> Girl, like you, you, you're bringing tears to my eyes. Woo. I, I just, I asked her, I said, can I, she was in the middle of hair and makeup. When, if she was so chill and cool about it. Mm -hmm. And I like, is it okay if I go to the restroom? And she was like, yeah. I went to the restroom. I turned the water on and I bawled my eyes out because I was just like, this is surreal. Like this is, these are things that you hear about in movies or, or these are the things that I'm, I watch it. I watch mm -hmm. these type of interviews and yeah. I would have never thought in a million years like that one yes would have opened up all of these doors for me. Wow. And sometimes that's all it takes. All it takes is that one yes. It takes the one yes, but it also takes the preparation. Like yes. let's let's like you did the work in college to prepare yourself to know what you needed to do, even though it was scary and even though like you your voice, like you said, your voice was, was trembling, but you were prepared enough to even just be in the space, right? And so, like, kudos to you for not um, backing down and for showing up and showing out because you could have been late. You could have not been dressed apart. You could have not printed out the three copies. Like, you could have just showed up like, oh, well, my mentor told me to be here, so here I am. No, I love this story, Jay. Thank you, sis. <laughs> I love it. No, I, I like, for real, because... God just be God in out here, like yeah. he does. I love it. And you know, it's it's it, it, it. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, I tell this, I, I tell that story a million times, but you don't really realize how many times you have to get your story out. It doesn't matter you know, how big or how small the platform is. I tell people, and that's and it's the same thing with networking, right? Like I tell people all the time, I don't care if I talk to at least one person in the room. If I'm impacting at least one person or if my story is touching at least one person, I'm good. Like mm -hmm. I'm good. And if I got to tell my story a million times just to touch one person, I'm good. <laughs> well, I've been in a bit of a rut myself lately, if I'm honest. And I would say in the last three to four days, God has been giving me these little winks. Like, girl, go ahead. I got you. Like, a wink, a wink, a wink. And so I just had one when I picked up my dinner. And then here's another one, like these these winks, like this right. this conversation is 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 it's on purpose, um, and, and so uh, I'm grateful. Yeah, but I was saying, 
it's on purpose, but at the same time, you don't know how you you how God is even using you. And I feel like this is also healing for me in a way because who mm -hmm. like have been going through it. You know what I mean? Like even though I'm telling my story and it sounds very motivational, there are days where I, I, I can't even get out the bed. You know what I mean? And, you know, July was, was a really rough month for me, if we mm -hmm. being honest. And mm -hmm. I remember I just had so much self-doubt in July. And I was just like, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if, I'm, if, if maybe should I pivot? Should I go in a different field? Should I go in a different mm -hmm. direction? Like, you know, I just felt, I felt defeated in a sense. It's like, you know, I, I, I get on these prayer calls every morning and, um, I remember this this morning um we were on a prayer call and I remember um one of the, the lead prayers he was like you know sometimes sometimes you que sometimes you question God and it and it's okay it but as long as long as you keep going and you are consistently showing up oh lord that's the devil <laughs> I won't forget that well, I keep getting in my way <laughs> as long as you keep going and as long as you keep throwing up it don't matter how ugly it looks even if you did one even if all you did today was survive you know what I mean like that sometimes that is just enough and so um you know I thank you for this platform because there's so many people who are who are in the comments and you know people are feeling seen and people are feeling heard and you know even what you're doing with this podcast, the name itself speaks volumes. And, you know, we're, we're all amateurs in some sort of way, but that amateur has to eventually become the expert. <laughs> oh, that's real. That's real. Wow. Look, I'm like, I'm trying to like swallow it down. So the tears don't come because not, it's not the time at this, this moment. But what I will say. Oh, we don't do nothing to <laughs> cry on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but these lashes, look, these lashes is fresh, girl. I'm not, I can't, I can't get them at sub just yet. No, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, but for real, a little bit. But Jayla, I want to know when did you pivot from working in a corporate role to taking on your own clients? Like, what did that look like for you? I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't want to. I didn't want to own my own business. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to own my own business. I had intentions on moving to New York and working mm -hmm. in the industry. And I wanted to just be an assistant. And I wanted to just sort of figure it out and figure out how I can navigate in the publicity world. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that was working, doing publicity at, at Epic Records or, or Sony or, mm -hmm. you know, just have that real sexy feeling of like working with these working on the team of these a hundred percent right you know did i did i ever think that i could work with a big artist mm -hmm. absolutely not but god surprises you at well, god surprises you all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> i've worked mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a little bit now. and i remember i remember after after i pivoted from um, working with Remy, I tried to go into the talent agency world, and I was working at ICM Partners. I hate it. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of like an so getting that, still getting that, getting that 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 stead pat, that steadfast, but still like in a corporate way. I thought this was going to be like my introduction into like working at a label or something like that. Okay. Nah. And I'm not knocking it because, you know, that being an agent may be somebody's dream. Mm -hmm. That was <laughs> yeah. and I just remember like being so fed up with the microaggressions mm -hmm. and the corporate politics the, the corporate politics and the long hours and the work life balance and, and 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 how that was non-existent and still broke. <laughs> <laughs> Bad <Bye -bye. laughs> Like 
I, the, the math ain't mathing for me. I don't know. Right. <laughs> don't light at the top. <laughs> for me, okay? For me. My story. I, like, I'm like, it's my truth. Yes, I hear you. This, my, this is my truth. And I remember um, it was kind of like a mutual, like I was going to quit and I was getting fired at the same time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Up, and that was at the end of January. And going back to Black Girls Media Podcast, uh, I mean, not, not podcast, the Black Girls and Media Group Me, I was looking for something to do. So it started off freelancing first, right? But I knew freelancing wasn't going to be enough because I knew freelancing was also like one off. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and I remember it, but I will say, I will, I will definitely say, I had the luxury of living on one of my closest friends' couch. So financially, I was able to kind of like breathe a little bit. I wasn't yeah. able to, I, I was still on a, on a short time time schedule. Listen. of living on the couch. No, and but um, the, the laughter or the cheesing is that's my LA story. Yes. And it it's, was like, I get it. And so it's like, you got a little bit of breathing room, but you ain't got that much breathing It's like, your friends are like, all right. <laughs> I believe in you, but um, you gonna yeah. have to make it. And even for me, it was like, I went from being, you gotta think, Ashley, like, I went from being like that girl in college. Like, I'm talking about Miss Savannah State, you know, fresh off the yard. I had just played Delta. I was I was that girl. You was hot, yes, girl. Right. Being that girl, the girl who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so the couch girl and who are and you exactly? It was it was like I went through an identity crisis because mm. I was this H queen. You know what I mean? Like I like everybody knew me. Mm-hmm. To boys to look like. And it wasn't until life smacked me so hard. I will never forget. Remy was having a grand opening. She was opening up a store in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I remember seeing myself on an episode of Love and Hip Hop. And I looked crazy as hell. I'm talking about my hair wasn't even. My hair was like, I think I had like, I think I had like braids in my hair for like three months. Like I, I ain't look, I'll say this. I ain't look like myself. <laughs> right, 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 right. From like a very poised and your hair is done every week and makeup, you got a makeup artist. I had like two royal print. I had, I had assistants in college. I had a cleaning girl mm. in college. Mm. So I was all of that. The $500 that I moved to New York with, baby, that was gone by week three. Because when I had to go work summer jam, I Ubered. I'm thinking mm. I can so all that on. So I'm in the negatives at this point. <laughs> so I, I was unrecognizable. I was I was my life. And so I went into survival mode. I went into like, okay, Jalen, granted, you don't have to worry about a rent right now, but you still have to figure out how to transition from the couch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, what can I do? Because like I said, freelance things, like those were like one off opportunities. And mm-hmm. only resource I have was black girls and granted it was amazing, but that one check is not gonna supplement my life. Mm-hmm. So I networked across. And mm-hmm. My I, I hit up all my friends who was in, in the mass communications mm-hmm. program and I was like, Okay, you sing? Great. Let me do your PR for thirty dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Thirty dollars hundred dollars. I started I I knew if I couldn't do anything else, I tapped into what I what I knew I was good at and at the time that was social media. That mm-hmm. was how I was for my own following because even though I knew I wanted to be a publicist, mm-hmm. I knew at the I was good at and that was yeah. social media and I and I recognized that early on so I was doing social media plans for people I was managing their social media accounts I was a social media manager for about five people and I was charging mm-hmm. each of them $300 and I had one PR retainer 
and and though and that was how I was starting to make my money. But I knew at the day nobody knows who I am, and so there I said, okay, well let me go volunteer again. Let me go mm -hmm. do free again. Let me go get another internship. And I remember it was this one particular publicist who I looked up to, and she was looking for volunteers for an opportunity in LA, mm -hmm. and. I was like, I gotta, I gotta be next to her. I gotta be next to her. I gotta be next to her. I gotta, I, gotta, I just gotta get in the room. Mm -hmm. I had all my life cash at me twenty dollars, so that way I could buy a plane ticket. Oh, I love it. I, I love my, it. my ass out there. And granted, I had family that I could stay with in Pasadena, but you know, you know, because you know, like, you know, Pasadena That's is far. <laughs> far, far downtown LA, mm -hmm. and you are already broke. Mm -hmm. I met her in a lift, and lift share was a thing. I met a mm -hmm. soror. We greeted each other, and off the strength of the bond, she was like, "You need a place to stay." I said, "Yes." Yeah. She said, "You gonna stay with me?" Wow. And she street from where I needed. I didn't know what was, and mm -hmm. from that forward, like. I just started, I just really started just going back and talking like that survival, like that Miss Savannah State grind of like yeah. positioning myself and branding myself as if I was my own client. Mm -hmm. I, I I understood the importance of branding mm -hmm. and not necessarily faking it to I make it as far as lying and putting on a facade, but as far as showing up and having a, a and having the right presentation mm -hmm. um, and, and not necessarily having the experience, but showcasing people. I look, I know my stuff. I'm passionate about it, and I just need a chance. Yeah. And I felt like that was more, that was my message. That was my brand. That like a lot of people knew, like, okay, you know, I see her, I see her showing up. Let, let me let me take a chance on her. And yeah. so as I as, as people started taking chances on me, and I started volunteering, it started becoming a word of mouth thing. And so you know, with the right social media marketing skills that I had to position myself, I I knew a thing or two because I was a mass comm degree. I I just remember every day God kept telling me in my ear, you have everything you need. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what kept me going. Like literally hearing mm -hmm. that in my ear, like you didn't have to be at Atlantic Records. You didn't have mm -hmm. to be at, you know, Sony. You didn't have to yeah. be at, at, at these big labels to still do the work that I called you to do. And mm -hmm. so from that point forward, I started making enough money. And when I got to the point where I was able to afford to move out, that's mm -hmm. when I that's when I said, okay, I'm taking Jay McKee and Co. to the next level, and I'm moving out. And so when I moved out, that's when I went and I got my LLC in 2018. And then mm -hmm. from that point forward, I, I I faked it till I made it. I had a certain confidence of myself to where mm -hmm. I might be I might be broke, I might I might be brain, I might be stressed out. But mm -hmm. one thing about being an HBCU campus queen, you know how to make it look good. You know how mm -hmm. to dress. I, 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 I used to tell people all the time, child, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. And mm -hmm. so that was how I carried myself. And I felt like that alone, like people people saw something in me um, when, I, when I would carry myself like that. And I felt like that also was something that like I proved to myself of like, okay, Okay, like you, like you may know a thing or two, and I, and I think, you know, my village and the people around me, um, who were constantly pouring into me, um, mm -hmm. who in life into me, who was really helping me with, you know, the confidence of being able to strike out and and, and do my own mm -hmm. PR. It's what mm -hmm. really shaped my business. It, it, it wasn't. I can never say, oh, this was self-made. This mm -hmm. my business. It was my friends having an auntie who had a restaurant who might have needed social media. It was homegirls, uh, my homegirls, a uh, friend of a friend knew an entertainer and they needed somebody on the team. As mm -hmm. long as I heard about the opportunity and I showed up, that's yeah. I was like, thank you, I can take it from here. And so yeah. from I knew I was going to go above and beyond every time and I made sure to always on the promise and over deliver and with that over delivery started getting that word of mouth and to, to and to this day i've been blessed enough to not have to ever go out and solicit services but 
the work speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. And I'm not you know, 10, 15 years in the game or anything like that, but the work speaks for itself for the level that I'm at right now. Yeah. That's lit. No, I like, <laughs> wow. <sighs> <laughs> no, because like all the things that I keep, yeah. All right, doesn't even matter. Jalen, <laughs> no, but it's crazy because not crazy, but I keep telling myself that these are the things I'm going to do, and then I it's the self doubt, all the things that we keep talking about, right? And so the fact that you're saying to me that I bet on myself, I did this, I'm doing this, and Literally, listening to T.D. Jakes earlier today, God can't bless what you don't build. And I keep, like, I I have to build it. So, again, another wink, another wink, another wink. Halfway, I will say that, I will say when when the self-doubt creeps in, um, you know, when when it's days where I feel like I'm, I'm crawling into a thing I've discovered called founders depression, mm-hmm. um, you know, just lots of different just life. And outside of PR, you know, I'm a human, so mm-hmm. I'm going whatever I'm going for. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the one thing I will say um, that I really locked in when I was having those moments was I, I, I me and Sarah Jakes. Listen, you know that's my best friend in my head. I know. <laughs> She's my best friend in my head too, and I li- I was sermon after sermon. I would wake up listening to her sermons. I would literally um, listen to Molly Till's podcast. Like mm. I had mentors, these people in my head. I remember one time. I remember twice. I wanted to do wings. I wanted to do wings. So mm. mm-hmm. I'm talking. About, I w- it was one. The other time, I, I, I can't even remember. I think I, I was having some financial issue. Mm-hmm, and I remember, mm-hmm. and, I, and I was just so sad. And I was like, dang, like, this could really, like, put me in the room. This could really put me in there. And sure enough, when the pandemic happened, boom, master class. Boom. <laughs> boom. And I, like, like li- li- literally, like, I just had to keep myself grounded in just different motivational sermons. I had to keep myself grounded in podcasts. I had to keep myself grounded with having a few friends that I could just like let out. And then once I got enough money, I invested in therapy. And mm-hmm. I've been in therapy consistently um, for two years now. And I feel like that that has kind of been like mm-hmm. my soul to kind of overcoming a lot of that self-doubt and yeah, a lot of yeah. that, that negative talk that we ourselves sometimes. Yeah. Um and yeah, like that 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 it, it establishing a routine like I and, and affirmations. Okay? Well like, listen don't, you don't sleep right. on <laughs> so that's, that's perfect. So you know that I'm also the founder of Affirmed Armor, um yes. apparel and accessories. So this is the perfect time for me to ask you what is your go to affirmation? I have everything I need. Mm. I have everything. I need. everything I need. Um, I will say another affirmation. Um, girl, don't get me started on them, cause girl, I, we we can go. <laughs> that, we we gonna have to do a part two. I feel it. I feel it in my spur. Girl, you know we good. You know we good for a part two. <laughs> but um, I, I wanna I wanna read a few um that have been getting me through um the day the day is recently. I'm gonna pull them. I'm gonna pull them up. Oh, this is good. Glitz and Glam yeah. says the glory is inside of you. Ooh, yes, y'all drop some of y'all affirmations in here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Please, please. Um, let me see. Okay. Whew. Um, my computer is acting up, it's but. Okay. Here, I will. I am enough, I, which is one of our. Uh, yeah, I have. Is, I am enough. Yeah, I am enough. I am my highest. I am my highest thoughts about myself. Mm, I am my most beautiful project. Mm. I am the greatest vision that I have ever visualized. Mm. 
I am the happiest feeling that I have ever felt. Ooh. And I have to say that one a lot because I sometimes I'm not. <laughs> so I, I say am the this. happiest feeling I've ever felt. No, that I, like I am the happiest feeling I have ever felt. That's that's good. I'm writing that one down for my for myself. Yes. Legit, so, that's going that's going on the mirror. That's that's yeah. a good one. And con and control what you can control. Mm. Control, yeah. control, um, cause control what I can control every day. When when we we when we get an intrusive thought, that's the that's that's the moment where I'm like instantly like I'm stop I'm stopping the mid track and I'm like ah, mm -hmm. we not doing that today. Yeah. And another one that I do with like as far as like when I when I'm trying to get back in my workout bag, um, is you know show up for you today. Mm, that's it. Show up for you today. Um, one, one, and another one that I will say that like me and like one of like my good girlfriends, um, we're kind of like accountability partners. We, we check on, we call each other coworkers. Cause mm, I love that. Don't she runs her own business? I run my own business, and so we call I each other. Co love that. <laughs> oh, can I, I want to be a coworker. Oh, yeah. where, 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 look, where do I apply? Girl, 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 we just face our stuff. I'll be like, we just, I'm like, all right, I'm doing a wellness check. And, oh, and the, the affirmation that we tell each other every day is all right. And I have it written, I have it written on my, um, on my dry erase board at home. And I have it, and I have it, and I have it written on my, on my mirror in my, um, in my bathroom is we are doing hard things today. Ooh. We are doing hard things today. And wow. that, that pushes me because it's like, okay, sometimes I got to have a lot of hard conversations that I don't want to have. Um, mm -hmm. I got to just overcome a lot of things, just not from even from a PR standpoint, but I'm, I'm learning about like the business part mm -hmm. to it. Like yeah. those are challenges that I'm, I'm working on. It's really hard to work on and in your business. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, Everybody, having your own business is the hardest thing you will ever do in life. And so to any entrepreneur, I don't care if you're just now starting, you in the middle of the journey, or you've been in the journey for a long ass time, my hat goes off to you because PR is already one of the top five stressful, the most mm -hmm. stressful in the world. And so mm -hmm. having a part of PR firm, working in PR and trying to run your own business, you got to work on the business and the business, and you still got to make sure that you are consistently executing and performing for your clients we doing hard things today <laughs> Listen, i love that and you know what it's funny because or interesting that one of my ween sisters and we do this we still, like have study halls and mm -hmm. so we would set it like plan the day so we weren't co we were like co-working on zoom right on our own doing our own things but it was a way for us to be accountable to one another but i love it i'm taking study hall and 10xing it to your co-workers and i see like four or five co-workers that i have in in the chat right now so it's supposed to be a whole thing i'm excited hey it's hey co-workers yes <laughs> no but for real this is that let's talk that needs to be a thing i think I think it could really be a thing because it's so, a lot of us are sitting at home and yes. I will say like, especially I've been, I will say I have been blessed enough to, to get to the point where, you know, from sleeping on someone's couch to having my own apartment is a, it's a blessing. However, okay. come new levels, new devils. Okay. And, and sometimes it is so hard to get out of the bed into like, sit at my Listen. desk Listen. because it's like all in the same it's all in the same vicinity and it's like i just the, bought a new desk today it's a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. i get it i remember if i remember last week i said you know i don't got it today and i'm just gonna lay in the bed and i did and i did hey, are we are we kindred spirits because right. you were like, this is my life that was my life i said, i don't got it today wow this is but, wild but but look but we're here but you know what it, it, we are but but most importantly, like V says, and something that she said that has always stuck with me is just to give myself more grace. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like in the midst of whatever is going on, I'm no good to no one. I'm no good to no one else if I'm not good to myself. Oof. 
That's good. Also, Tierra just came through. And also, I, I slept on Tierra's couch. Um, so <laughs> shout out to the couch, our couch girlfriends. Couch okay, girl. so <laughs> uh, Tierra's affirmation says, I've already, I've already overcome the devils on this level. Love it. I've already yeah. overcome. Okay. Shout out to her, my girl Tiffany. She is a hey, gem. Tiff. But she she ain't gonna share her because you know you gotta pay for that. But she has the best affirmation. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Her page is an affirmation aesthetic within herself. So shout out to the Hill Heart. She's amazing. Love Tiffany. Love that. Hey Tiff, we're gonna get you on to the podcast because we need I should definitely um have her on your podcast. I'm not even being funny. You should definitely reach out to her. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. All right. So I want to ask you two more questions. And um, we probably going to do a part two. But we co-workers now. So we're going to be talking all the time. So, I mean, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> um, okay. So what's something that you know now that you wish you would have known sooner, whether professionally or personally? Girl. What's something that I wish I would have known then that I would have known now? That you know now, right? So, like, for me, it's, like, giving myself grace. But, yeah. Um, and doing it scared, right? But you, what are, what are your things? <laughs> well, I'll say, I'll, say, I'll say two. So, the first one is one thing I wish I would have known is um, – like I have to really, I I have to do a a better job at loving the body that I'm in, mm -hmm. and I have to honor the way that it it helps me work and it navigates mm -hmm. and it energizes and and mm -hmm. just working functions like mm -hmm. my hands, um, my eyes. Mm -hmm. Just my just my health in general. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I would have honored my health a little bit more. Yeah, that's because good. because when you're young, you know, you don't think about. I will say this: you don't think about stress and anxiety as much as you do in your in your later twenties. Mm -hmm. I would be able to just like be stressed out in college about a, a, a quick test and. It just be that, and I go move on. I go party. But I did not realize stress and anxiety was real, mm -hmm. especially anxiety. Yeah. It wasn't until I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder last year, mm -hmm. and I remember waking up one day and I was just like, "When did I become so anxious all the time?" Mm -hmm. And so I just. I wish I would have invested in self-care a mm -hmm. little bit more in my mm -hmm. early or even in the beginning of uh, this entrepreneurial journey because although my story is beautiful and it's inspiring and it's motivating, you know, there's always a darker side to the things okay. that we always don't glamorize. And mm -hmm. I took That's my right. my health for granted. I did. I think I, I stressed over things that I shouldn't have stressed over. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to just controlling what I can control. If I would have told my if I would have told myself to control what I can control early on, I think that yeah. I would have a lot more stress and anxiety because now um, you know, it will trickle into other things um with your body. Um and so like for me, for example, and I have no issue talking about it, but I have PCOS. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though that is something that um, I struggle with and I deal with, um, it's a cause of just really putting mm -hmm. a lot of stress on yourself because you have a hormonal imbalance. Yep. And so I, I just really wish I would have taken care of myself in that mm -hmm. regard a little bit more um, yeah. because I feel like a lot of the stressors and a lot of the um, mental um, disorders that we develop stems from like little actions like oh did I send that email and it's like yeah like you might have been worried like yeah you might be worrying about did I send that email but it's like did I send that email turns into 
an anxiety attack when you might feel like you're just having a really, really bad day. And yeah. sometimes, you know, a bad day for someone else may look like the end of the world for someone else. And so I used to feel like when I would have really bad days, I would feel like it was literally the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And so I wish I would have taken care of myself a little bit more. And also, um, I wish I would have eaten better. <laughs> That's real. I, I feel like when I moved to New York, my diet just went down the drain. And I mm -hmm. think I was in just to the, just the, the be filled up, but and I was balling out of on a budget and I was mm -hmm. broke, all of that great jazz. And I was going to the bodega on the corner and, you know, mm -hmm. getting Second the stamp. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And <laughs> And I, I could have had a salad. Mm -hmm. I could have had a salad. I could have had some fruit. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could have been broke and healthy, but I was mm -hmm. I was not healthy and still broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, that that those are all very good things. Um because I do think especially well, no, I think this generation, right? The people who have come after us are really big on self-care and, you know, boundaries and, you know, cutting out time for themselves with. Great one. I don't feel like I had it. I don't feel like I had boundaries. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I had boundaries in the beginning. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to create them, especially like, because you're in that hustle mentality, right? So how am I hustling with a, <laughs> and having a boundary? No, it's sort of counter, well, when I was completely in that mindset, it just, anything goes right it's i need yeah. to get to it, whatever it is it's the right way so how to do to get through the day the right yeah. Way. but yeah no boundaries are so important and i'm trying to do better at making them and then also like keeping them but and, and i think the part two to that with boundaries is i wish i would have said no more hmm I wish I would have said no more professionally. And I also wish I would have said more. I wish I would have said no more personally. But when you're. But when you're on. But when you're on that journey. When you're on that entrepreneurial journey. When you're on that. Trying to build your business. And trying to build that clientele. And, and just networking within itself. You feel like. Ooh. Like. I got to say yes to this because that may, that may lead to the next, to the next opportunity, or, mm -hmm. you know, I may got to thug it out with, and, and, and say yes to this. So that way, you know, mm -hmm. I'm planting the seed for that. And when you get real mm -hmm. clear on who you are, no is a lot more easier. And so yeah. um, I think that like the confidence that I have now to, to say no is, is what I, I, I feel like I would have saved myself a lot of time, um, a lot of money, um, and, and just would have done a better job at having boundaries, especially yeah. that, especially as a black woman, I feel like, you know, we get, we get it, we get it the worst, especially, yeah, 100%. you know what I mean? I'll never forget. I was, I reposted this TikTok last week and it was this woman, this black woman, she was, she was talking about how she, you know, she put her, she put her money, she invested it in. Um, this this black owned bank and something happened and she was so mad and she marched us and she like took her money out the bank and this woman had pulled her to the side and was like asking her why she took her money out and she was telling them like oh this was the situation and she's like I can't believe it and asked me why I was taking my money out the bank and um, I'll never forget like at the end of the video she was like well, let me ask you this. Where are you banking? Who are you banking with now? And she was like, oh, like Chase. And so she was like, okay, so you're more comfortable sending the Asians kids to school versus your own. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me because even like as a black, as a black business owner, a lot of my stress and a lot of my anxiety was because a lot of people were so hard on me on my mm -hmm. first mistake versus like all the times we fly we fly these airlines we fly delta we fly united i just had a terrible ass experience with jet blue last week but guess what when it was time for me to go back i'm still looking at all right well let me see who got the cheapest flight and if that might be jet blue who's to say i'm not oh they gave me such a terrible experience does that mean i'm gonna stop does that mean i'm gonna stop 
giving them giving them my hard earned money? No. Absolutely not. We don't even right. have a black owned airline. So I think it just kind of goes down. It, it trickles down into you know how we talk to and how we deal with each other. And I think we just mm -hmm. got to do a better job at that because if if us as a race did better with just talking to each other kinder or mm -hmm. you know wanting to support a black business without it being conditional. Don't support me because I'm black. Just support me because it's a good business. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the mental health that we talk about in our community um, could make breakthroughs because that healing conversation can cultivate into keeping the dollar in the family versus, mm -hmm. oh, like like the one time they mess up. See, this is why I don't support black businesses. <laughs> or this is, why I don't do, this is why I don't do that. It's like, it, 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 it just... It, it just stems from that systematic oppression of wanting, you know, us to turn our backs on each other. And, yeah. and I feel like if we gave each other more grace, if we really collaborated and we weren't in this crab in a barrel mentality and yeah. we were in competitions with each other, we could be just like the Jews. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the issue, though, is, is that because we were the first and only for so long, that now that there's more of us right um it's it's like pathological almost right it's like i i'm nervous that if i do x then i might be out and then she's going to be the black girl that's in right which is yeah. dumb but it's just sort of how i think we've been conditioned um and then my mom has said earlier in the chiz app um that doing too much used to be a badge of honor which like we were talking about that hustle mentality like who gets the gold star the person that showed up at seven and stayed until 7 a.m because that's it shows that you have grit it shows that you have hustle it shows all the things but it also shows that i'm tired but that's the person and especially i would say in entertainment and even i would say law i think in each field <laughs> in each field i think there are um I think you get badges of honor for working the hardest, working the longest, right? And where we could probably maximize efficiencies over um, and effective in being efficient and effective as opposed to just being and, and like being present for a long period of time. But um, yes, baby, this is a good conversation. Okay, so it's a lot of chatter in the um, in the chat. <laughs> the chat is chatting today. I love it. We love to see it. Um, okay, so I'll bring. Okay, so how do you define success today? How do I define success today? Um, I define success today by my relationship with God, being in my right mind, mm -hmm. and having the flexibility to do my purposeful work without financial constraints. Mm. That's beautiful. Yep. I love it. <laughs> background, <all> right? <laughs> yes, mama's in the background. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, mom. Um, okay, so <laughs> as you know, I'm the amateur expert and I know a little bit about a lot. Um, and so What's I that? would like Yes. So that's my mom taught me that. So that when you were saying that you were in gymnastics and you're doing all the things, that's literally my mom was like, explore, like live life. Um, and you should always know a little bit about a lot, be able to speak in any room. Um, you may not know everything, but just know just a little bit. Um, and so tell me this, Jalen, teach me some things. Uh, give me a fun fact, uh, something that I can say Jalen taught me. Um, and I might be picky with this one and say, can it be? something along the lines of like a PR or social media type thing. Okay. I will I'll give you two. Ooh. I'll give you a so I'll give you a social media one. Um okay. so I know like a lot of people were talking about uh, when it comes to social media, I know a lot of people talk about like, oh like dang like why is my why is my, my photo quality blurry once mm. I post roll into my um in, into my instagram mm -hmm. so go to settings and you go to account and you go to um matter of fact oh, dang i wish i could 
I wish I could pull it up. If you go to, if you go to, okay, so if you go to settings okay. and you go out and you go to quality and you click the button over, it'll switch the quality from regular into 4K. Ooh. Yeah. So okay. What, okay, tips. So I'll send you a screen record so that way you can share it with <laughs> everyone else. But it's a game it. and it makes the quality on your photos way much better um, because sometimes what happens is like if you're if you're connected to the wi-fi and you try to post um or if you're in a bad area that has bad reception whatever the reception that you're gonna get is is gonna be um the, the type of photo quality that you're gonna have on um on your photos i am here when, for it. um i'll do a pr tip um if you ever need to get in contact with anyone or you're trying to find a contact um, for whatever it is, you can always go on the press room of any website. And mm. that is where all of the press releases live. And that is where you can find the contact. Love that. You are truly changing the game, not just um like in the work that you do professionally but personally Roxy stop it hey Roxy listen it's a, it's a it's a family affair I love it Zola um we are okay. going to um repost uh she's gonna do a, a screen a screen share a screen share a screen recording and then I'll post it we'll post it in our stories um so that you can get asking I'll show you I'll, I'll guys how to do it i promise <laughs> love it so post it in your stories and then tag me and then i'll do the thing yeah. the things will and be done what will be thinged how to find a contact if you go to um the press room on a website so like say for example you want to go to the bet awards if you go to um the press room on bet's website and you and you pull up the press release um it'll have the contact at the end of the um at the end of the press release of who to contact Love that. This <laughs> oh, I'm so pretty and knowledgeable. <laughs> she was a blessing today. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Jalen, I want to give you an opportunity to please let us know how we can support you. Where do we follow you? What are the things? What do you have coming up? Any projects? How can we support you? Oh, thank you, Ashley. I am hiring. <laughs> Amen. I am hiring. Um, I'm hiring interns and I'm also looking for for a PR assistant, so part-time. So if you or if you know anyone that is interested, I am looking, and all my information is on my website or my email, which is linked to my Instagram. And you can find me on my Instagram at um, Life is Jalen, which, of course, if you click on the link, it'll, it'll go to my business page. And on my business page, it'll have every and anything that you need to know on my website. Uh, ways you can support me. I am, and of course, actually, I've mentioned this before. Um, I am actively looking for um, grants and venture capitalist funding and trying to raise money and mm -hmm. just definitely trying to tap into that space and looking for investors who are interested in, you know, a PR startup mm -hmm. who is interested in you know invested in a black woman owned PR agency yeah I would love to connect with anyone who may know someone and know someone that may know someone and are then you most connected with um fearless fund they're having a something this weekend or coming up real soon oh um, but they are I think it's tomorrow I think it's tomorrow. there's some free digital tickets or tickets to the digital whatever yeah, I'll send, the, I'll send you that information. But, oh. Oh, yeah, go. <laughs> Look at the oh. Lord moving. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that is how you can support me. Oh, Shay, you still here? <laughs> Love it. Hey, Shay, we got to get you on the podcast too, Queen. Yes, oh, yes. Rache Barnes, Dr. Rache Barnes, mm -hmm. she represents... Okay in the industry anyone from I Am Pretty V to Milano De Rue she, she, is, she is a OG in the game she's someone who I look to to get advice from, to vent to to hold mm -hmm. me accountable um, she is a great friend and a great colleague so you would definitely want to be her as well as 
Love that making connections. Yeah, she said it was started by uh, Arian Simone, who is one of your sorrows. She's saying so. Yeah. Um, she will definitely connect y'all, which I love, and I love Arian. So that's what's up. So this has been amazing, amazing, Hi. amazing, amazing. I'm so happy that I was just like, you got Nexus. Like, let's just let's just do it, and <laughs> you got Nexus. And that's all next. comes back into like networking across. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, this has been amazing. We are going. We are now coworkers, so we're gonna be talking more frequently. Like I said, and I keep saying it because I mean it for real. And um, yeah, this is for real amazing. It was great meeting um, your tribe, and I cannot wait to um, see what 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 God is going to do in our lives because it's it's greater than us. But it's I feel like it's we're we're in a transition and something something is brewing. So I can't wait to celebrate with you soon. I'm happy I could plant the seed. Um, you know, we have been virtually connected for like the past two years and I just yeah. thought it was so cool that we were able to meet this year in person. That was that was a moment. Not once but twice. I know. Oh shoot, yes. We met at and, the Grand um, weekend. Yes. Look at that. Uh, what? Yes. Um, It'll wait, feel I, I met you Grammy's weekend. What is that? And we were both what? sleeping on our friends' couches when we first started. Like Listen. What what's what's Kyla saying? Uh like like I just I keep telling myself and anyone that will listen that the life that I'm living right now I couldn't have even imagined. Known no, but I wouldn't I couldn't even known what to pray to get like you know what I mean? Like I this wasn't in order even to the scope, right? Like I wasn't even here. LA, yeah. California. It wasn't even a wasn't even a and thing. All of mine, LA. Well, we're gonna speak that into existence. <laughs> yeah, hey, I can't. You know, we're gonna. This brunch is. It's the whole thing. You're gonna be here. It's gonna be. It's amazing. I can't wait. Yes, well, and we're you, gonna be celebrating. Well, you always have. You always have a friend in me. I am always a text message away. Any way I can help or support you, let me know, and I got your back, girl. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, we will see you next week. Um, this has been amazing. Thank you all for joining and be good to yourself and be good to others. Peace out. Right. Bye, you guys. And remember, control what you can control. Mm, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>